Cheers. Welcome back to the channel. So if you take the past, present and future spread out of the equation, I really feel like the Celtic cross is probably one of the most popular, spoken about, um, printed, spread in all of existence. I mean, I just quickly went and grabbed a couple of books from my bookshelf and immediately found pages on the Celtic cross, how to do it, what it looks like, what all the different definitions mean in the different positions, even the little um, book that came with one of my old decks. You can tell it's a pretty old one. This has it in, this is fairly old in itself, but then I've got like a book that's even older than this from like, the 19, let me get this right, 40s. And even that has the Celtic cross spread in. And then books that literally have been printed in 2019, that we're still talking about it. But the ironic thing about the spread to me is that though a lot of people are talking about it in books and teachers are helping people understand tarot through the Celtic, Celtic cross spread, I don't actually see an awful lot of people doing it in real life. Like I, I've never been read before from someone who's using the Celtic cross spread. I never see a lot of tarot readers at fairs or markets doing Celtic cross spreads. So why? <laughs> to come to some kind of conclusion, I've got to ask myself why I didn't use the Celtic cross spread. Um, <laughs> and I actually, this year only, fell in love with it a little bit. It's just a little bit of an overwhelming looking spread. Though it doesn't look like it's beginner friendly, it is massively beginner friendly because it basically embodies so many different spreads that we use instead. So some of you might like advice spreads. You might have a simple one where it like tells you what you should do in a situation that you're in and you're like, yeah, I've really mastered how I, how I can define each card. Um, you might be someone who only does past, present, future. You might be someone who only does readings for like your mindset and how to change your attitude and those sort of things or your environment. The Celtic cross covers all of that. It's sort of like all of our favorite spreads in one, in a sense. And though this might be a unpopular opinion, in the early stages anyway, when we're still learning, I don't think we have to believe that every single card in that spread needs to be read. If you don't feel comfortable with something, if you don't feel as drawn to a certain card that's sitting in a certain position, you don't have to dive into it as much as you want to. So if you've laid a bunch of cards out on the table and they're staring at you in the face and there's a certain card in a certain position that you feel very like drawn towards, you have a feeling you very specifically know this message that's coming up more so than the other ones that perhaps you just feel a bit blurry about, hone in on that specific message. You're, you are picking up on something that couldn't have been there otherwise if you were to go back to your trusty spread, the middle card might be negative and, and you might need to like refer back to the other cards surrounding it as to why that might be the case. But there's no harm in just focusing in on that negative card. If you feel like something about it is drawing you in, cherry pick what you feel confident in when the cards are laid out around you. I think if you've come to a certain point where you've learned tarot, you understand a few definitions, you're getting to know a few kind of spreads and positions and how they can relate to the card definitions and you don't really know what to ask, you don't really have a topic in mind. In fact, the reason why I got into the Celtic cross spread recently is because I've been doing readings for people in my local area face to face and I sort of got a bit overwhelmed with the idea of someone sitting in front of me and saying, I've got no topic, I've got no question, just read me. So I had to sort of rely on something that could show itself to me on the table for me to hopefully gather up some messages from what cards are laid out in front because sometimes I don't even entertain or like talk about one of the cards at all because I feel like there's an important message maybe further down here on the spread. It's been a little bit of a savior for me in that way. I guess what I'm saying is you're allowing opportunity for cards to show themselves and for a story to be told, you're, you're giving that chance for, for a message to come through when otherwise you might have been a little bit tunnel visioned. I think sometimes we can we need to let room to be surprised for stuff that we need to hear. I think often we're 
the amount of times I read for people and I feel that actually I've just done a reading for their ex and not even the person I'm reading because that person's so focused on like if their ex is coming back, if they're doing the right thing, how do they get close to their ex? And we're very like tunnel visioned on, on like one specific thing that we wanna read. It allows things to come through. It also gives room for our intuition to like spark up and like go beep, 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 beep. When we flip all those cards over and there's a card that's landed in a particular position that we feel quite excited about jumping into and, and picking apart for the person we're reading or for ourselves. I don't want people to feel that they have to know absolutely everything that's happening in their cards that they're pulling when they do the Celtic Cross. So this video is basically gonna be me pulling my own cards in the Celtic Cross spread and you can follow along at home and me basically showing you how a beginner can very easily give a very solid reading. So let's get to it. This super old deck, Adam worked out, it was, it's from the 1930s, I think. Yeah, very, very old. One of the original Rider Waite Smith decks, actually. Well, I wouldn't say original, it's going a bit far, but definitely one of the first, considering how many are printed these days. Um, this was a gift to my mum from someone in, I think it was in the family. You can tell they're quite old by the way they look sort of hand-drawn. I don't use this very often simply because I want to keep it in good condition and I kind of let people shuffle with my cards quite often so I don't really want too much energy going on these. Anyway, so what I want you to do is to grab your decks and follow along with me and basically kind of look at what I'm doing but also keep referring back to what you pull for yourself and how you can relate to what I'm saying about what I'm doing while I pull my cards because there's going to be feelings and intuitive stuff that you're picking up on in your gut that's very different to what I'm saying in this video and picking up for my how to cross spread. So when you've done your shuffling I usually cut once, cut twice and I take middle card. You don't have to do that at all. That's just what I've come to do over time and then I will begin. So card number one, card number two. I like putting that under there because something I've noticed about this particular deck, particular deck is that the person in the four of four of pentacles looks off an awful lot like the uh, illustrator who drew the, the tarot deck. So I always think of her now using this. So card number four, five, Six, goodness me. Negative Nancy cards over here today. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Like this is a little overwhelming, is it not? I mean, I'd be overwhelmed by this if I didn't know any tarot definitions, that's for sure. But what you do want to ask yourself is where do you not feel overwhelmed? So immediately I feel very comfortable with the Hermit card. Um, I think that it is to me quite a simple card and it's just basically about like stepping away from the thick of everything going on, from my situation and doing a little bit of deep reflecting on my own. I mean the Hermit, it's a given that it's about being isolated, being on your own, doing some deep thoughts with yourself, like asking yourself the big questions, like what's my purpose here? What is the meaning of life? He's put himself up on that mountain top to reassess, reanalyze everything and how it's shown for itself. So because that lands in the advice position and obviously you, you might wanna refer to like a little bit of a help sheet in rem remembering just a keyword for each position. And there are loads of different, as I said, books and online that mentions what each position represents. So refer to that, but you don't need to know any more other than advice, environment, attitude and approach. <laughs> Don't overcomplicate it. So because I, I feel comfortable knowing that the Hermit card in an advice position is fairly simple, I've gone straight to that message and I've already translated this reading into a message. So say I was reading someone else, I simply need to say here, you need some more alone time. You need to be stepping out away from everything because you're so in the middle of it that maybe you're not realizing things for as they actually are and as i'm speaking that i'm kind of like darting my eyes around the different cards and it's triggering memories about 
the other cards which I know speak closely to that, speak similarly to what I've already just said. That being the moon, for instance, not seeing things for as they are. Now I know the moon card is about illusions and this card I know sits in the position of conscious thinking. The forward part of your brain isn't seeing things clearly so therefore you can't move clearly. <laughs> I've connected a message that I've created a message from what I could have been very overwhelmed at originally had I, had I looked at the entire set of cards. Say you are someone who typically just likes doing future-based readings. Well, remember, we've got two very good positions for that kind of reading. We have a near future and a far future. I think something really important to do in, in a reading is to look at where all the energy is heading, right? So I always find myself glancing over to that card up there, mostly, because I'm like, right, this is where I'm gonna end up in a, f in a few months time, so I want that to be positive, right? I'm looking at a strength card, and though I've just kind of said, I'm not seeing things clearly now, and I might be struggling a little bit now, and, and having a hard time with reality, and trying to find the confidence in, in seeing my way through something, particularly because, you know, the moon is all, also often about anxieties. You know, that's what anxious people do. They, they make up the scenarios in their head. They find it really hard to see the difference in reality and, you know, what their anxiety is just telling them. So the strength card is, is typically a mental health related card um, because it's about finding strength, courage. So I know that energy is probably going to change in the long run. The stuff that I'm saying about what I should do in isolating myself from everything to reassess and to, to maybe recharge and work out my, my route, my plan. I, I feel quite confident in that. I feel I, I, I probably am going to empower that message. And I was just saying to my partner literally yesterday in the park, how I've moved from that position. I felt very confident like a month ago and I'm going into a little bit of a rut and feeling very conflicted. And I'm just a bit worried about how I can get that position back, like how I can get old Ellie back in the past. She's tending to her like goals and desires. If you are staring at a bunch of cards that are just blinking back at you and you're freaking out a bit because you're not un you're not sure at all what, <laughs> what any of them mean, ground yourself a little bit and take it back to when you were at school reading picture books, right? So these are simply telling you a story. And as a kid, you could read a picture book without any education. The messages flew out of the, the book, so you could do the exact same thing when reading this spread because what you want to do is kind of see what story is being told in this timeline here. Say this was a picture book, this lady in the star card, she looks very optimistic. Um, her arms are open wide, like her body language says that she's busy doing something, she's in nature, she's going with the flow, hence the water. This guy, he's doing the opposite. So something here has happened to make him a little bit more pessimistic, maybe perhaps more of a, a grumpy, um, fed up frame of mind, not open-minded at all. And though there's more pentacles in this card, um, that to me might say financial growth will um, occur. And therefore, something about that process leads me to a position of feeling more so in my power, having a little bit more control in the same way that she's kind of holding down that lion who could potentially chop her head off, bite her head off, but she's like taming it, she's taming that inner beast. I love to compare my current card with my advice card. So if I'm being asked to do this, do I look like I'm doing enough of that in the card that I am currently? So the center card is your present, is how you are acting and being and looking now. So if I look at the advice card, does it feel familiar? And the more different they are, the more different they feel from each other, I think the stronger the message. So let's say I had a very kind of fast paced center card and I was say Knight of Swords, here, there, everywhere, very scattered energy. And then my advice card is more slow and it's about healing. Then the message there is pretty clear. For this, I would say it's not too different in the fact that there's not a whole lot of movement going on but instead maybe I need to see the life lesson. Like I feel like recently I've lost a little bit of my spiritual self and maybe I'm clinging on to so much stuff that doesn't actually mean anything and, may and uh, have a lot of purpose. I mean, that's what the pentacles represents anyway, isn't it? So material stuff. 
So my energy more so needs to change, I would say, in my headspace. I don't need to physically change too much other than maybe my environment, go to a place which I can feel a little bit more spiritual and, and deeper and I can reflect more and maybe do some um, meditation. You can also compare your attitude and approach card to the advice, what you're being asked to do. Once again, quite slow cards still. So I feel like I've, I've got the right energy and actually these two together are giving me meditation vibes. Meditation is something I haven't done for almost a month because I went away to go down south to see my family. I stopped doing it and I was saying to Adam literally yesterday in the park, I was saying to my partner, I think not meditating has throw, threw me off whack completely because once you start getting into it, when you fall out of it, it impacts you way more than before when you never meditated. So it kind of really helps your life sometimes, but then stopping it throws you down harder. <laughs> that in itself tells me that my kind of approach correlates really well with what I'm being asked to do. So I should kind of empower that intuitive, like that gut feeling I've had in why maybe I feel spiritually disconnected or, or in a little bit of a slump right now, or my anxiety is a little bit higher than it used to be when I was feeling a little bit more confident. I think a really good thing, lastly, to compare to is the now, how you're looking now to the future. Is there an improvement there or does it look like you lose the way a little bit over time? If there's an improvement, then great. I mean, that in itself is a good message for someone because you could say, hey, look, things look like they're going in the right direction. Energy looks like it's picking up for you. Things will look brighter, like whatever the card is, is showing you. However, if not, if things feel negative, what can you kind of warn the person you're reading about? So let's say <laughs> I got this card in the far future. Now this card, it looks like people are having an argument, right? It's conflicts. So I'll warn the person I'm reading about certain environments they're in. Are you hanging out with people that empower you, that lift you up? Make sure you don't become part of petty arguments. Like only have discussions and conversations with people if you feel like something kind of productive will come out of it because this I always see is like spiraling around in circles. If this is me now and this is my future card, I'm probably gonna wanna say to the person I'm reading like, this slump that you're feeling in with yourself is probably gonna manifest into the environment around you and you're gonna like flick that negativity you're feeling inside yourself onto other people. Focus inward on yourself for now um, before it kind of turns into a bit of a shit show. <laughs> So I hope that kind of helped. I'm gonna give one more example and notice how I didn't, I don't think I, I even once looked into the subconscious card. I didn't read into that card because I didn't feel necessarily connected to it. One, two, three. Card one. Now, as you look over at your cards, I would also say to take a deep breath and to pace yourself and be a bit patient and not expect immediate things to come flying into your mind. Just give it some time. I know sometimes that's a bit nerve wracking and hard to do if you're reading for someone and they're sitting in front of you waiting for like <laughs> what you see. Sit over, gaze, and as you're kind of glancing your eyes upon the different cards, what can you not stop looking at and referring to? Where do your eyes keep falling back onto? And that's obviously gonna be probably influenced by the colors of the cards as well. Um, me personally, obviously I'm looking at the center card. It doesn't look too sunshine and roses and also these three here because they're the same color. So I think it's important to look at patterns and things that have an interesting um, dynamic when they sit amongst each other because that itself might be quite a good message. And immediately I can say, whoever I'm reading, or myself, um, sleepless nights. It's really not difficult, right? Really, like giving a reading can be as simple as just throwing a few sentences together. So like, currently I am feeling anxiety, lots of overthinking, you know, I know lots of, uh, lots of swords in a tarot reading is heavy mental activity. So it's anxieties, she's in a bed, and she's sitting upright, everyone knows that probably means she can't sleep. I don't need to be a tarot reader to know that when we are up at night, we're probably thinking about the past. 
you're probably stressing about the future yet and once again this actually feels very similar to my previous reading for myself which makes a lot of sense this was me visiting my family i know this is a family orientated card this sits in my past so happier times in the past here a birthday of some kind and my literal sister-in-law we had a birthday party it's all about the four of wands so i'm moving into some sort of um temporary stress and i do get that sometimes but as i said what you know where's that timeline heading us to heading me to ace of cups so this kind of isolated feeling that the nine of swords is giving me isn't forever i feel like the ace of cups as cups is about love and connections it's me potentially letting love in further down the line being a bit more open and expressing all of those things that i previously wasn't <laughs> So now my eyes gazing over the, this King of Pentacles. I know the King of Pentacles is concerned about house, home and health. So I can kind of use that attitude interpretation to understand what these worries might be about. You know, to get an understanding of what is going on in this person's head, I can kind of look at like, you know, what their attitude is. Well, they've got a lot of focus around the house, home and finance. So that might be something I'm worried about my savings, which, spoiler alert, I am. <laughs> and as I said that, I've just realized this card here is about money. So in the far future, it feels like that's building. It feels like I'm either gonna have enough to be able to like feel more balanced because there's a scales there. You know, the, these symbols on tarot isn't rocket science, like scales, we know that's balance. Um, this is a charity card as well, so I even might receive some sort of gift to someone, like once I open up using the Ace of Cups card, someone might be able to provide me with something helpful. Or it could be me being able to be more charitable because I have a little bit more of a financial flow. The last kind of thing I'm picking up on is this crossing card. And I didn't even mention the crossing card in the last example I gave. But I'm picking up on it a little bit more now because I've always known the hanged man to be about making yourself comfortable in uncomfortable situations. That's what he's doing. Like even though he's hung upside down, he's sort of looking quite chill and he's becoming enlightened by that situation. So this kind of relates a little bit to the last spread that I just did about the hermit card, like finding the deeper meaning, finding the message in your situation, finding like what it's trying to show for itself, like how you can see it in a different perspective. That's what the hermit's about because he has to like step far away from a situation to find that different perspective. And that's similar to what the hanged man is. It's also a very spiritual card. As a crossing card, it either helps me or hinders me. And to me, that kind of says this person clearly cannot find any comfort in their situation. Instead of stressing it to be the be all end all, instead of thinking that it's all doom and gloom and the drama and all of that. Try and like flip on its head what good can come out of this current little lull that I have, this current still moment. As I mentioned, not a lot of these cards are about movement, they're just about staying still. For this second example too, I didn't pick apart every single position. You don't have to, and that will change every time. Like you might be very hyper-focused on one position for one reading that you do, and in the next reading that you do, you're really focused on this or a couple of positions or this one card in particular you you really know a lot about so you can just sort of use that to, to help you kind of understand what the other cards messages are too um, you can kind of grow off of that definition that you know so i might jump to the full card because that's quite an easy card actually i know the fool's about new beginnings and taking leaps of faith so as i am aware it sits in my environment position this is the people around me then that for some reason is having an influence on everything else. So that can give me a good idea on why these cards might be showing up. You know, my environment is filled with people doing new stuff, going on new ventures and, and um, starting new lives themselves, perhaps going traveling. And I'm in a little bit of a stall. You know, the hanged man is about time stopping and stalling and delays and stuff. So perhaps I kind of feel a little bit left behind. I can use that definition to make me think about why people in my environment who are in that position may be negatively affecting my mindset. So I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments section if it did. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Sending loads of love from my house to yours and have a lovely week.